Well, warm welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 28th of December. I hope you had an excellent Christmas time. Now, data's been rather sparse, to be fair, over, over the Christmas period, it has to be said. But um, basically, what's happening is what we've been anticipating uh, for some time now, for the last few weeks now, really. Huge number of cases so far transcribing into relatively low numbers of hospitalizations. And we're going to be looking at the UK and the US to illustrate that today. Now, I just want to start off with some fairly poignant data here from the United Kingdom. So 24th of December, uh, Omicron patients in hospital, it was 366 24th of December, just before the data sort of shut off for a few days. Uh, Omicron total deaths then amounted to 29 people who'd been diagnosed with Omicron within uh, 28 days of diagnosis. Uh, data from yesterday, the 27th, Omicron hospital patients has gone up to 407. Now, this is in a context of, um, we'll look at the precise figure later, but about 8,200 people in hospital. So those diagnosed with Omicron in hospital so far, 407 yesterday, uh, 24th of December, what, four days ago now, 366. So it's gone from 366 up to 407. And the deaths, unfortunately, have increased from 29 up to 39. But we don't know if these people had significant comorbidities or not. The number of officially diagnosed COVID, uh, uh, COVID Omicron cases are now up to 159,000 in the UK, an extra 45,000 on the day. But we do actually know, as I'm about to demonstrate here, that they're all Omicron now, essentially. So this is the graph for the UK as of yesterday. So the purple, of course, is the Omicron. The green is the Delta. And as we see now, the uh, what is that figure? 90%. So we're now 90% Omicron in the UK as of yesterday's data, which of course will be a day or so out of date. And the other thing that we do know, like to notice on this graph is that the, so the, the length of that bar there, that is the number of cases of uh, Delta. And we can definitely see that the numbers of cases of Delta are going down. That one is definitely smaller than that one, which is smaller than, than that one. So the number of cases of Delta are reducing as the number of Omicron cases increases. In other words, as we'd hoped and basically as we'd expected, actually, uh, the Omicron is displacing the Delta. This is this is remarkably good news. This is what we'd hoped for. So another data point here is uh, new uh, confirmed cases per million people. So these are the new cases. Japan, we're doing an interview in, with a Japanese uh, informed person shortly, so, because we really don't know what's going on, but uh, Japan still essentially zero. Australia, as we've seen, increasing markedly. Um, people are now travelling more between the states. I think Western Australia is pretty well shut off, but we're going to see a massive Omicron surge in Australia, as indeed we are. We've started to see it already. Canada, Omicron surge likewise. United States, clear Omicron surge in the United States. And the United Kingdom and Ireland. This deflection in the data here is, is due to uh, Christmas not reporting. It's not a genuine thing. So United Kingdom and Ireland uh, leading the way in terms of new cases uh, per million people. But when we look at the number of uh, people in hospital... Um, Canada, again, fault in the data there. Ireland up slightly. The United Kingdom, no two ways about it. It is up slightly. It's up somewhat, but not a huge amount in the UK. Uh, United States hospitalizations have remained relatively high for some time now, but I, I still believe a lot of this is not Omicron related. I think there's quite a big delta hangover in the States, although we don't have a definitive split on that. Deaths, the United States have remained fairly high, unfortunately, over a long period of time now. Um, Ireland, they're much lower. United Kingdom deaths are lower. Very slight increase there, but I don't think we've seen any evidence that that's Omicron related at the moment. Canada, Australia, Japan, much, much uh, lower. So um, just a bit of orientation data there, really. Quite uh, interesting. 
Now, I want to look at patients in hospital because this is, this is the critical point. This is the critical point here. Um, actually, we'll just look at we'll just look at the COVID symptom tracker data just to show how pronounced this is. The, the, these are people remote, remote reporting symptomatic infections. So basically, nearly two million people reporting symptomatic COVID infections in the UK, extrapolated to the whole population. Uh, that works out at 188,000 new cases in a 24-hour period. It's just huge. And we can see the numbers there. This is the prevalence. So we're up to, two, is that, is that 200,000? It's just, just a tad under 200,000, isn't it? Um, that is the Omicron uh, surge. And this is what we're seeing, to be quite honest, as we anticipated, around the world. But anyway, hospital data from the UK, all, all the references there, um, all the references are in the description. Do check them out. The hospital data. Now, this is this is for the UK as a whole. So we do see a slight increase. And, and I think we have to say it is a slight increase in the UK. This is just a slight increase. These daily in cases here, slight increase in overall hospitalizations in the UK. And as we said before, that relates to uh, 8,240 people currently in hospital. That's yesterday's data. But of course, as far as we know, remember, um, of those, 407 are Omicron. So 407 of Omicron out of 8,240 people actually in hospital. So this is looking remarkably encouraging so far. And if it is the fact, if it is the case that the Omicron is, well, I think we can say the Omicron is replacing the Delta because there's less and less cases of Delta. So I, I'm hopeful that hospitalizations are going to go down as a result of Omicron displacing Delta. London is a particular epicentre. Now, in London, this is Omicron driven because they're uh, um, about 10 days ahead of the rest of the country, perhaps. There is an increase. So there is, there is some increase. So this means that in the rest of the country, we are going to see an increase over the next few days in hospitalisations. No question about that in my mind at all, but a modest one. The curve should be the same as, as London. And this is transposing to 2,640 patients throughout the greater London area in hospital. So it's not a massive surge. It's a slight, it's a slight increase. And if we just look at the, uh, the data is a bit incomplete, but there we see the increase in cases uh, in the UK. So no question that those cases are increasing dramatically. Multiple data points are showing. Uh, if we can get the healthcare data, is it going to work? Yeah. So, um, as we've said, um, latest patients admitted just over, a, well, ne nearly 1,200, 1,771, 8,240 people in hospital. But the trend, certainly compared to what we saw last year, um, we're getting nowhere near those numbers of figures. So these are patients admitted, slight increase in admissions there. But the number of people actually in hospital not going up dramatically. And of course, the explanation for this is that People with Omicron who are admitted to hospital seem to be kept in for a shorter period of time because they're not as sick. And we are not seeing the extreme stress on intensive care at the moment. Let's hope it stays that way. But at the moment, we, we are not. So the rest of the country is going to follow the London, is going to follow the London pattern. Now, um, this is quite an interesting story. Um, this is from, um, I forget who it's from now, actually, but it's, um, I think... My apologies, I'll check on the name. It might be James. But a, t a testing site, Upper West, uh, Upper West Side, Manhattan. So uh, Sunday, uh, you went to a uh, local testing centre at 4pm. And they were reporting there that they're getting a 50% hit rate. In other words, there's a 50% positivity in Manhattan. This is just absolutely huge. And it does seem consistent with other data that we're seeing. So in other words, for every 100 people going to get tested, 50%, uh, 50 of them are testing positive indicating massive, massive community transmission in Manhattan, for, for example. And they do say there that hit rates doubled each of the past three days. Sorry, it's not James, it's Michael. I've got the, I've got the name written down here. It's Michael. Apologies, Michael. Sincere apologies. Um, so Michael had very mild symptoms, um, not even as bad as a normal cold for Michael, which is very pleased to hear that, Michael. Excellent. Everyone he was talking to in the queue uh, ha had the same problems because... People have been queuing for tests all over the states. The the, the testing uh, kit logistics problem in the states is significant, as, as as you well know if you live in the states. 
I tested positive and was surprised given how mild the symptoms are. So, but why, very wise to get tested, Michael. Very wise to get tested. Slightly blocked up, uh, feeling of being a little ill for one day. So delighted you had such a, mod, a moderate, uh, moderate, uh, moderate symptoms. Slight headache, uh, no cough or runny nose in Michael's case. Um, this surprised me because I've been, been practically in isolation. So uh, Michael lives alone and had only been to the supermarket in, in off hours times. Now, a lot of people have been reporting this. They're saying I've been diagnosed with Omicron and I don't know how the heck I got it because I haven't been out. It's almost like it's flying through the window. Now, I'm not saying it's flying through the window, although it is aerosol transmitted as we know but um just shows how transmissible this is and how quickly it's spreading around everywhere uh, so michael's amazed that he got it and does take vitamin d does take some zinc and um who knows this may explain uh, the mild symptom set indeed who knows but i'm glad to see you're taking vitamin d and a small amount of zinc at least for a, a reasonable amount a small amount of time so that's the UK data there. Uh, let's move on to some CDC data now. Um, and again, well, it just speaks for itself, this huge surge in, in cases. And remember, this is, this is in the United States. These are officially diagnosed cases. It's nothing to, well, this is a very small subset of infections. Um, but this is in severe difficulty getting testing kits. So... Um, yeah, there's a big surge in the States, but let's just see if we can see uh, deaths on this, daily deaths at the moment. Slight downward trend, which is, is good to see. Now, how much of that is uh, reporting delays over the holiday? Probably some of it, but we're certainly not seeing the surge in deaths that we saw in the previous wave. At least we're not seeing it yet. Um now, this is the next news story we want to talk about, the CDC shortening the uh, the time period. So um, isolation down uh, to five days if 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 asymptomatic is, is this. So this is from this report here. And again, as far as possible, we go back to the original references here. And of course, these sites are there. So it's not it's not this is not the, the Times told the Chronicle told the Guardian. This is all as far as we can, going back to the, uh, the the sources of the data. Surprisingly difficult sometimes. Really is a problem that so much of mainstream media feel they don't need to bother telling you where they got the information from. They just say, take my word for it. Well, I'm afraid we don't. Uh, as, as indeed, I hope you don't take my word for anything. Um, always test what I say by the, the external uh, data. Um, anyway, isolation down to five days from 10 days. It was 10 days. Uh, followed by five days of wearing a mask. So instead of isolating after uh, for 10 days uh, in the States, they're now recommending you isolate for uh, five days and just wear a mask for five days after that if you're coming into contact with people. So quite a radical change. Of course, this is necessary to stop the country closing down. Um, I mean, this is necessary. Uh, th th this can be justified on health grounds, is what the health officials are telling us. And in actual fact, I'm being cynical, but, but 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 both are true. It can be justified on health grounds, I believe, but it is also necessary, totally necessary to stop the nation closing down. And we're going to be going the same way in the UK any day now because we simply have to, because there's just too many people off sick who aren't really sick. They're just having to isolate. So one or two days before the uh, onset of symptoms and uh, two to three days afterwards. So imagine that sort of... Um, Imagine day one there is when you first get symptoms. So that's day one, the first symptomatic day. So one or two days before that, you're going to be infectious. And then for two or three days after that, you're going to be infectious. So it's a relatively short time period. So infectious then two days before, infectious then one day before, infectious then one day after symptoms, two days, three days after symptoms, four days after symptoms, you're probably not going to be that infectious. And what is transpiring is that these tests um, are pretty useful in indicating whether you're likely to be infectious or not. So if you get a negative on one of those tests, um, suppose you get a positive on one of those tests one day, then you get a negative the next day. It's pretty, it's a reasonable assumption that you're going to be uh, very, very less trans less infectious the day 24 hours, after, 24 hours after you get a negative test. Because these are testing for uh, viral volume. You're only going to get a line on the test thing there if you've got a relatively large 
viral volume, and of course it's the viral volume that makes you uh, infectious. So these are a remarkably useful tool, and President Biden has promised there's going to be lots of them uh, any day now. Um, so that's the infectious time. Uh, Rochelle Walensky, uh, the Omicron variant is spreading quickly and has the potential to impact all facets of our society. We'll basically close it down if we stay with the 10 day thing. So she's correct. CDC updated recommendations for isolation and quarantine. Balance what is known about the spread of the virus <coughs> and protection uh, um, by vaccination and booster doses. So you're right. It's, it's a balancing act. I, I, can, I can go with that. Um, these updates ensure people can safely continue their daily lives. Uh, prevention is our best option. And she uses the same thing there about uh, advising on prevention. Get vaccinated, get boosted, wear a mask in public, as we know. So th this is a US hospitalizations now that we want to look at. Now, I think we've got that here. Yeah, we have. So this is US hospitalizations. Now, um, it's a bit small, but I think we can see that in most age groups, it's going down. Now, what we've been worried about, this, is the, this of course, is the older age group here, the 70 plus age group that gets most hospitalized. Now, I can't blow this up because it's direct from the website. But what we've been worried about in the UK is that so far, the people that have been getting Omicron in London, especially, have been in the younger age groups. What's going to happen when it gets into the older age groups? Well, so far in the States, we're not seeing an uptick uh, in cases of hospitalizations in the older age group. In fact, we're starting to see a potential uh, reduction in that older age group. So um, maybe a bit early to say that's encouraging, but it's not. It's certainly not uh, causing further consternation or anxiety at the moment. I'd say it's slightly reassuring. So here's all our references uh, for the United States. Now let's move on to um, click on any of these that you want and browse <laughs> for as long as you want, really. Uh, South Africa data. Now we're getting the South Africa data from um, here. This is the hospital data from South Africa. And this is this is kept uh, updated. So um, and you can um, enlarge it. And it's a pretty good dashboard, actually. This is the main one we've been keeping an eye on here. Uh, 8.93 patients actually in hospital at the moment. So just under 9,000 people in hospital who've been diagnosed with COVID. And we know in South Africa that all the COVIDs are, in fact, Omicron. So let's just look at the South Africa data now in a little more detail, because this is this does seem to be where we're going. Um, new cases in South Africa, well, shot up, of course. So f first wave, second wave, third wave, wild type wave, beta wave, delta wave in South Africa. Cases shot up, but now they're, they're actually going down. I don't think there's any question about that. They are dropping down now in South Africa in terms of new cases. Hospitalizations. Now, we believe this data is complete here. This is this is the data for the last week in the month, which, of course, isn't complete now. That will be the, uh, the 52nd week, finishing on the end of December. But we can see that hospitalizations went up a bit, up a bit, not, not a huge amount, up a bit, and now hospitalizations are going down. And there's the live data there that shows that. And we can see at the moment 1,313 people, at least I can see that, you just have to take my word for it. Uh, 1,313 people, it is on the website, do check it, don't take my word for it, but it, it is there. So 1,300 people oxygenated, requiring oxygen in South Africa at the moment who've been positively diagnosed a very small amount very very encouraging um deaths in south africa first wave second wave third delta wave fourth wave it looks like we're looking at that kind of thing so this does seem to be what we are looking at in a population with good levels of immunity as we've said the proviso is that the levels of immunity that we've been talking about here in South Africa are largely generated by natural infection. But if we take a country where immunity is largely generated by vaccination, is it going to be different? Is it going to be different? This is the question. Now, in the UK, most of our immunity comes from vaccination. So it's looking like not, but we actually don't know this yet. So the main case example is Australia, which is essentially no natural immunity because it didn't have many infections because it was so good at what it did. Um, but now, of course, uh, Omicron is spreading through Australia basically like a wildfire. So here we see it. Um, active cases, capital territories, New South Wales, large amounts, of course. 
uh, Victoria large amounts of cases, Queensland and South Australia increasing. Western Australia is still low because the borders are closed, uh, nearly all locally acquired, uh, of course, uh, over the past uh, 24 hours. So uh, the, these, of course, are cases in Australia, which, of course, are a subset of uh, infections because not all of the infections are picked up. Now, um, moving on, um, this, this graph here is uh, cumulative cases in Australia. I mean, wow, a um, few there, few there, very effective lockdowns and restrictive measures trickling up since the policies changed and now absolutely scooting up. And I would expect this to, uh, to carry on uh, going up in Australia uh, quite uh, significantly depending on how much they test, because basically the virus is going to go all, all, at least all over. Uh, in, the, in the next week, the virus is probably going to go all over uh, Capital Territories, New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia uh, and, and Victoria. This is spreading very, very rapidly. And this is what I would expect to see in Australia. Now, the question is, of course, how is this going to affect hospitalizations in a population whose immunity is good, but whose immunity comes largely from vaccination? So this is what we're going to be keeping a very close eye on over the next uh, few days. This graph shows the number of COVID-19 cases currently admitted to hospital, including cases in ICU. So the ICU are the smaller bits on the end. So basically we see New South Wales, that says uh, 521 in hospital at the moment. The whole number for Australia is 1100. Uh, Victoria 368. So this is what we're going to have to keep an eye on in Australia. Because we really are unsure how this is going to pan out in this population whose in virtually all their immunity comes from vaccination. Um, now, I've gone on a bit today, but I'm just going to give you a very quick bit of information from South Africa who've radically changed things. Uh, so this is the revision to their protocol. A proportion of people with some immunity from infection and or vaccination is high, but largely from infection in South Africa, as we know. Past infection, 60 to 80 percent in zero surveys. This is not the case in Australia. The past infections have not occurred. The immunity is good, but it's from vaccinations. So we don't want to compare apples and oranges because this is South Africa, not Australia. I'm not saying I'm concerned about Australia. I think it's going to be fine, but we don't actually know until it happens, I'm afraid. Uh, containment strategies are no longer appropriate. So basically South Africa saying, well, we can't contain this anymore. It's everywhere. Um, new knowledge about the virus. High proportion of asymptomatic disease. Good. Uh, high degree of asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic spread. So people without symptoms are spreading this. People before they get symptoms are spreading this dramatically in an aerosol. So we can assume that it's hanging in the air for a few hours. So when someone's in a room breathing, aerosolized, aerosolized, tiny, tiny microscopic droplets of water containing viral particles just hangs there in the air. It's not like big droplets where it drops out quickly. This is why, or one of the reasons why this is so transmissible. Only a small proportion of cases are diagnosed, of course. Testing is skewed towards the symptomatic cases, of course, which is the minority and not everyone is getting tested. And not all negative tests are true negative tests, especially on the lateral flow tests. But if it's well done, um, then there's a good chance that it will detect you if you are symptomatic. The hard part with these tests is, is getting to your tonsils because it, basically if you put the swab on your tonsils, you really gag. So when you see people getting tested at the back of the mouth and they're not gagging, it really is hard to believe they've got to the tonsils. And of course, they're the getting back far enough back in the nose to the appropriate place in the nose as well. So quite a few false negatives, depending on how it's done. Quarantine's costly, uh, thus following with immediate effect in South Africa. All contact tracing to be stopped with immediate effect in South Africa, except in particular areas where there's outbreaks. All contacts must continue with their normal duties, just with heightened monitoring. So they test the temperature, they see if they've got any symptoms. If they develop symptoms, they should then be tested and be managed according to the severity of their symptoms. So basically they're saying this disease should be ignored unless it's symptomatic. 
all contacts must not be tested uh, unless they develop symptoms. So it's actually saying don't test. It's actually saying don't test contacts. Uh, then quarantine, all quarantine is to be stopped with immediate effect <laughs> for people that are asymptomatic, whether they're vaccinated or, asym or, or, or unvaccinated. No testing for COVID-19 is required, irrespective of the risk exposure, unless the contact becomes symptomatic. So they've moved entirely on to symptomatic. Asymptomatics, no isolation period required. Just keep an eye on yourself for five to seven days. If you get mild disease, such as fever, cough, sore throat, malaise, headache, muscle pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of taste or smell. If you get any of those, the isolation is uh, maintained at eight days. So in the UK now, it's uh, seven days. In the US now, it's five days. Uh, in South Africa, it's zero days if you're asymptomatic. It's now going entirely by symptoms. And of course, de facto, this is what we're doing a lot in the US and the UK anyway, because not, a lot of people aren't testing, of course. <clears throat> so this is the way they're going in South Africa. <clears throat> so if you are symptomatic, it's eight days. Uh, there is no need for a COVID-19 test, either PCR or, uh, or a lateral flow test to be performed prior to returning to work. Just scoot off back to work. Severe disease, uh, which is uncommon in South Africa, as we've seen from the relatively low numbers of hospitalisation, fortunately. Uh, so exacerbated symptoms, look out for shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, chest pain, uh, abnormal chest x-ray, things requiring hospitalisation. I'm pretty sure the isolation there has remained at 10 days. So there you go. Uh, South Africa basically have said, if you're asymptomatic, forget about it. Get on with your life. Uh, which is the way we're all probably going to go. So we did say when we first learned about this virus, that the Omicron and the transmission characteristics, this is probably what's going to happen. And so far it, it, it is. And, and so far it's, it's remarkably encouraging. It looks like we've probably been right so far. Of course, things could change. We can't brag about the future. But deaths remain low, hospitalizations remain relatively low. Some increase in hospitalizations in the UK will happen next next week. The biggest problem actually with the health services in the UK, and I believe it's the same in the US, is people having to isolate. So the severe stress, not because in the health services in, in areas, particularly in London, not because there's so many people sick, no, because so many people aren't allowed into work because they're isolating. So that rule is probably going to have to change. This is becoming endemic. It's going to be like a cold, it's looking like. Um, but as Omicron goes through the population, it's going to generate massive amounts of herd immunity. And I believe that's going to greatly reduce the impact of this pandemic on all of our lives because the immunity is going to increase really quite dramatically. So is, is, is Omicron the best thing to happen to us since the start of this pandemic? Could be. We'll know pretty soon couple of weeks and we should be fairly certain but so far it's looking promising thank you for watching